Hey everyone, it's Right1940 here, and we are back in C Power Naval Combat in the Missile Age doing the ASW tutorial. We've continued on waiting to get shot at so I can show you some torpedo countermeasure things that you should be doing in the game. And obviously, this isn't real, but I used to be a former um, sonar technician on Oliver Hazard Perry class and Arlie Burke class. I'm not going to show you real tactics, but these are tactics that you can use in the game, and they do work, and uh, they're just they're absolutely good enough to get the job done and enjoy yourself. Okay, so. When we last left off, we had this Charlie 2 run into one of our sauna buoys and was detected and we killed him. Now we've got these two SH-2s doing a mad search up here thinking there was maybe another submarine up there. There was not. There's a submarine down here and we need to get to him. So I want to call both my helicopters down this way. Uh, because we need weapons and sauna buoys down here to prosecute this guy. Um, while we take a count of everything. Let's click on the torpedo. We're going to be able to see um, the range to everything else uh, relative to it. So we'll click on that torpedo. We're four miles out. Very confident that this guy's not going to die and I'm going to show you what you can do uh, to ensure that you're not going to die. Okay. So this is a 5365 torpedo. We can use the unit reference. Um, I don't think it lets you do it on these kinds of things, but what you can do is just click on anybody else, go to unit reference, brings up the submarines, and we were fighting the Charlies, so we'll just go Charlie 2, doesn't really matter. Um, we can look at the torpedo loadout. Uh, if we take a look at that guy, four nautical miles, nope, don't care about that. Eight nautical miles, all right, we do care about that and then 10.26 nautical miles. So this is the furthest uh, running torpedo that this submarine can carry. And we're going to assume it's a Charlie class because that's what the other guy was and that's what the scenario is named. That's if you um, didn't know the exact threat. Uh, but luckily we were able to detect this on our sauna buoy and we can actually see what it is. So it is a 5365. We have verified it's over 10 nautical miles, 10.26. So what do we do with that information? Well, we're going to grab a marker, okay, and I just like to mark the, the point of the first detection, okay, something like that. So we'll just, for three of these guys, we'll put three of these here. Generally, one will work too, okay. Now this is the worst case scenario is what I'm going to show you. If we drop a ruler here, okay. We're going to pull out from the point of detection 10 nautical miles, 10.26 nautical miles. Okay. Uh, where are these guys going here? Yep, that's good. Okay. So towards the Astosin, uh, let's keep going further out. Okay. 10.3, uh, all right. Why am I doing that? Okay, in the worst case, if the sub actually just fired this torpedo at this spot and we magically detected it right when that happened, we got really lucky, this is as far as that torpedo is going to go. Why is that information important? Uh, because if we're running from this guy, we need to at least get this far from the worst case scenario where he, we just detected it as he launched and it's, what, four miles away from us. Um, okay. Yeah, f uh, four miles away. So we need to get the Astosin to run at least beyond this point, and then we know for sure he's safe. Did that really happen, though? It's unlikely. It's likely that the submarine launched it beforehand somewhere further back, and that the Astosin or the Sonobuis detected this at this range, basically. Um, so another thing that we can do for marking, and I like to do this to keep tabs on stuff, is use the ruler. I don't quite click it on the unit because um, it's it's going to start following the Astosin around while he's running and I don't like that. Pull the ruler th from the really close to where the Astosin is. Pull it through. Okay, we'll take a look at the line of bearing here. There we go. V 
the reason I'm doing this is to just imagine the other end of the this the potential spot where this was fired at. Okay, so we're looking at if if it was fired right here, the worst case we've got to run that far. Well, what if it was fired at max range to try and hit us? So it's 10.26. Um, we can pull this out a little further. It's 10.3, um, and we're looking kind of kind of down that line of bearing. Uh, maybe move it over a little bit. Okay. So if he did fire at max range, he could have fired from this spot. So anywhere from here to here, the, the submarine's likely going to be found if I drop sauna buoys. Okay. Um, so we've got the helicopters coming down, and we're going to have them, uh, we'll order them to drop some sauna buoys. So they're going to drop... Uh, at the point of detection, okay, and they come down this line, all right, and the other guy will come down here. So my goal is to figure out along this line of bearing where he's at. Uh, I should have added one more, sorry. Let's make sure we do that. Uh, oops, oops, okay. All right. Uh, so if he fired at max range, uh, somewhere along this line, he's going to be detect or between these areas, he's going to be sitting. Um, we could also help the sauna boys detect this guy by doing some counter maneuvers. The first thing is we want to get a torpedo in the water down this line of bearing. Right? We don't know where the submarine's at, but he doesn't know that we don't have a good solution on him and he has to run away from that torpedo he doesn't know if you're you've detected him and have a good firing solution so he's got to assume the worst to protect himself and so he's going to have to run and that's going to be good because we've got these helicopters coming down to drop sauna buoys along that line and if he's running we're definitely going to pick him up so we can right click and we can um, engage with mark 46 single salvo we don't need to fire more than one uh, if we had an um, ASRock, we definitely want to launch it like the furthest range it can go, just like this, down the line of bearing, same thing, and then um, fire an over-the-side torpedo as well. So we would have a torpedo coming at the um, submarine with little notice from the ASRock, and then also with a lot of notice coming down the line of bearing from us, uh, kind of force wherever he's at, force him to run. Uh, because we only have over-the-side torpedo, we're going to fire one down the line of bearing, Okay, and what that's going to do is, like I said earlier, he's going to eventually detect it and it's going to force him to run. Okay, but now that we've got that out of the way, we need to tell this guy to run at flank speed and we need to go the opposite direction. And remember we've, what we've calculated from this point of initial detection, if this was the actual start of where the torpedoes um, were fired, we at a minimum have to run out this way to be safe. Once you get beyond that, well, not necessarily in this case, but once the torpedoes run out of fuel, they will explode. You'll you'll see them if you're looking in that direction. They'll actually explode. Uh, but we won't know that. Okay, they could run out of fuel right here, or they could run out of fuel out here. So we've got to get out of the way now. I'm going to tell this guy to uh, change the speed to flank, and I'm going to give him a waypoint to go over here. Okay little bit beyond that and then we're gonna launch a noisemaker okay so all this is gonna happen he's gonna fire a torpedo launch a noisemaker and heal over to the, the starboard side all right there we go so this is why it's good to have the toad decoy on already and have everything streaming before you, you get into contact. So Stosin's going to run away. I'm very confident that this is going to um, end up with a, a miss. Stanley, we also got to get out of the way as well, right? Because we need to assume the worst. We don't have to um, fire another counter uh, counterfire because uh, Stosin's closer and has already done that. Uh, we don't even have to use a noisemaker, really. We just want to make sure that this guy's going to go flank to get out of the way. 
You know, it looks like the Stanley was actually... Yeah, it kind of lines up with the Stanley. It's not really going towards the Estosan. So with that revelation, let's drop another one of these things. Pull out 10.26. Oops. Right clicked when I should have left clicked. Okay. Alright. So as long as the Stanley gets to this point, uh, beyond it, we're good. Tucker should probably speed up, get out of the way. Alright. So that covers our torpedo evasion. And uh, we're going to stop the video here. We'll come back to it in our final bit. I think it'll be the last video. We're going to cover the localization of uh, where a torpedo was fired. Okay? So I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.